All right, Panda Nation, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I'll try to make this a short video. This is a glycine that I ordered. It's an Airman, uh, Airman 9, I believe. And I bought this because I recently had uh, another one and it was getting a little beat up, but I was so enamored with it that uh, I decided to get another one. Now that is not what it is. This one is the 3840, which is actually uh, the same as in, in another video that I showed you. And so you can check out that one. That's a black and orange one, but it was such a good watch. I've used it, worn it on so many trips and it's just been so reliable. It's a GMT, it's actually a triple time zone, but I picked up another one, but it's not orange, boom, it's white. It's white and uh, you know, this is not uh, a true unboxing. I've had it here for a little while, um, but I thought I would show it to you and kind of go over it because um, you know, it probably deserves a little camera time itself. Uh, it is absolutely a beautiful watch, and that's why I got it. So the, the Airman 9 3840, I think it's a Valjo uh, 7754. I guess that's the movement. And uh, it is a GMT movement. So we'll kind of get into all that. But I just want to show you kind of the aesthetic. Now, it does come with a variety of different bands, and I think stock it came with a bl like an, a black alligator style. I think this is an official glycine band though. It says glycine on it. Um, and so this is kind of a, a similar style to what you would get uh, brushed steel there and you know, kind of the thick, uh, super comfortable, super well-made. Um, but it has kind of this like denim leather antique look to it. I, I really like that, but you know, you can dress it up however you want. And because it's a white dial, kind of like a white dial or black dial, I really think those are kind of the chameleons of the watch world. You can kind of put um, a black band on it, uh, tan bands brown bands whatever you want red bands you know they just kind of go with everything so you know you could dress this up and make it a little formal with black you could dress it down and make it a little more rugged with the tan um just really awesome and it's just uh you know just an amazing looking watch so let's just start on the looks itself polished case 44 millimeters wide i will say that i don't remember exactly but i think it's like 14 millimeters thick 15 millimeters thick you can see here that the case back is is pretty thick and what it ends up doing is it's it's a pretty heavy watch Watch, okay so that would be my warning to people um, if you're basing it on the size you know it's not like super heavy as it's in uncomfortable or something but it's just one of those watches where you have to be cognizant that it's it's a little larger it kind of wants to drift on your wrist you know if, if you're one of those that doesn't that likes to wear it loose like I do you know it's gonna kind of move a little bit right because you have so much mass up here but I think it looks absolutely fantastic I mean even under my sleeve here 44 millimeters is kind of my ideal watch size I know that's kind of a little a little weird but look let's look at it compared to this 42 millimeter Apple watch right so that's uh that's kind of the combination here. But the Apple Watch is quite a bit thinner, even though the Apple Watch, I think, is a is a pretty thick little watch, too. Um, so uh, just unbelievably good looking. And the black one with the orange was just unbelievably good looking. You've got the coin edge here. And it's just got this very traditional looking Airman uh, bezel with the 24 hour markings on uh, the outer part here in enamel filled. So just really, really great. Probably one of the most um, attractive glycines, I think, but also on top of that, it is really their quintessential glycine. It's what they're known for. Let's take a little closer look at the dial here. I'll show you that it has a tachymeter on the outside here, uh, you know, where it's 400, 300, 240. That's for um, measuring increments of uh, distance over a certain time. You would use the chronograph in conjunction with that to uh, tell you what speed you're going. And as you can see here, kind of the brush to top dial, it's just one of these watches where if you see it and you're a watch guy, you know that's an Airman. You might not know it's a six or a nine, you might not know it's a GMT or a double 12 or whatever, but you know it as an Airman. And Glycine really has you know a lot of street cred, or should I say air cred, uh, kind of being an aviator's watch in that regard. So uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Now you can see here that we have you know, a really big hour hand right there with a lot of loom, um, you know, a slender minutes hand with a lot of loom. Uh, it, I will tell you this watch is dead right now and I can tell you I did that on purpose. You can see this, the, the slender second hand here, which is actually the chronograph hand um, and it stopped and I didn't mean for it to stop. But what I did is I started the chronograph because I wanted to show you the sub dials. I did the same thing in the other video, um, but I just ran out of juice. So we'll kind of wind it up here. And then this is your GMT hand with a little red uh, triangle at the end there. Applied hour markers, all luminous as well. Um, you know, those block arrows with, uh, you know, a chamfered uh, polished edge there, date window three o'clock, framed out in black. I love when watches color match the date window dial to the regular dial. This one is in a bright white, and I'll be honest, when I 
I bought it, you know, and I bought it out online. You know, it's funny because the white or the lighting on it kind of makes sometimes white dials look like they're like really cheap plastic or something, you know, and, and I was worried it might actually look like a Citizen. So if you know the Citizen Echo drives, you know, they kind of use this like translucent plastic and so white tends to look a little like milky and, you know, it's to let light through, I get it, but it kind of looks a little plastic and cheap. So I was, you know, based on the pictures, I thought that might be the case. Now, if you look at the dial, you can see it's really highly reflective. It might be a little hard to catch the light, but you can really kind of see it here on the outer bezel you can see it right there like uh, on this far side between the 19 and 20 where the light is reflecting it's very highly reflective so it's it's almost like a porcelain finish like a really shiny porcelain finish and uh, it actually looks great I think when you look at it you don't think cheap at all if anything you think um, pretty high end now I don't know if they're doing that with like a plastic or something but it uh, it looks great and, and that was kind of one of my big worries and uh, after unboxing and taking it out uh, put my mind at ease. I do like that it, it is definitely a bright like porcelain white though. There's no kind of you know pearlescence to it. There's no off-white. It's not slightly mother of pearl or anything like that. It is straight up white. So keep that in mind if that's kind of your thing or not. Um, this outer bezel here, as you can see, I've got the 24 on the 24. Clicks. Uh, clicks twice or every half hour. Twice for every hour. And it is bi-directional so you can move it back. And that's because it's not for diving, it's for telling uh, time. And this outer bezel is what you use for the, the third time zone. Now I'm gonna, you know, chronograph pusher up here, start, stop, and reset, and split and reset down here. I'm gonna unscrew um, the crown here, which you can see has the glycine logo. It's all polished, it's really, really nice. I'm gonna unscrew this so we can get a little uh, power um, into the watch here, a little wind up. But it's a good point. Let me take a, flip it over here and take a, give you a little peek at the back. Really polished, kind of bull-like uh, back on a glycine airman on a, a silver rotor. On my black one, for whatever reason, this rotor is like kind of a copper color. And uh, so I'm not really sure what the difference is between when they do that. But it says glycine airman and then it has an airplane there. You can see, you know, perlage on the uh, on the, the movement hardware, blued screws. Just beautiful looking. Of course, no one ever sees it, but, you know, just a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know why some of the rotors were, were colored or not, but it doesn't take away from anything because no one ever sees it. So I'm going to pull out the crown here and uh, see if we, okay, so I'm actually in the first position. You can see when I rotate it clockwise, I'm changing the date. If I rotate it counterclockwise or anticlockwise, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Okay, so I'm just going to push it back in here for a second and give this watch a little wind. I think the chronograph is still active, so... Um, once it gets enough power, we may see that chronograph take off again, just like it is. So I'm going to just give it a little more whining here. Um, you can see the pushers have uh, kind of this lower collar with, you know, knurling on it as well. Um, and so, but what I do want to do here is before we get to the, I guess, to the, the chronograph piece, I'm going to pull it all the way out to the last position, which I think is there. Oh, nope, I guess not. So probably one more. There we go. Uh, last position and now I can change the time here so right so what I want to do here uh, is change the time and you can see it works just like a regular 12 hour um, watch so it, let's call it noon there and then you get to one o'clock so I'll roll it over one hour uh, what you will see here is on the GMT hand just like most normal GMT hands it's gonna roll an hour but it's using this this outer chapter ring this kind of beveled ring here on a 24 hour scale right so what it's saying here is even though it's two or it's one o'clock this is not, you're not following the two, you're following this, saying it's one o'clock at your local time, it's actually five o'clock um, in that second time zone. Now, the way you set the third time zone is with this outer bezel, and uh, even though now it says five there, let's say um, that was Chicago time, and that's New York time, because it's six o'clock there. So you use the second hand to not only tell you the time in the second time zone, but in the third time zone as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just press this all back together because I want to get back to the chronograph here uh, because that is what you would use for the telemeter or the tachymeter. And um, you can see here that this is counting off the seconds. Now, this is also counting off. Oh, I couldn't have, I couldn't have done that worse for you guys, but uh, I covered up all the seconds, the, uh, the sub dial there, which was moronic of me. But uh, if I go ahead and just move it out of the way here. Now, actually, what I also want to show you here too is that um, we adjust that GMT hand by 
uh, pushing it back in a position, not too far I'm sure, and then uh, going anti-clockwise on that date wheel. So what you would do is you'd set the main time, your, your main time zone first, and then you would find your second time zone by uh, clicking around here. So let me just get all the hands out of the way there. Um, but that's how you set the GMT hand. So I'm gonna screw in the crown here. Nice, definitely water resistant. Um, and Swiss made, obviously. I really love the glycine brand. I, I, I talk about that a lot in other videos. I just really like what they do. Um, their style is kind of my style and I just like that it's a little off the reservation. It's a little more unique. So if you have the chronograph, continue to check, tick off here. We also have minutes counter up here and uh, we have um, hour countering down here. So I let this bad boy run for a while and you can see it's it's run for over seven hours uh, and this is a 30 minute counter so I think um, that's a 15 minute mark there. So it's like seven hours, 14 minutes and whatever seconds, okay? So if I hit the stop button here, it's gonna stop all those and you're only gonna see it once here, folks. Once I push this reset down here, we're gonna reset the, the chronograph seconds hand, this uh, sub dial and that sub dial. Pushing it, boom, fly back instantaneously. They're all lined up again. So you can actually time not only, you know, small things like a race or something like that but you can definitely time over longer periods of time as well so just a really really beautiful watch i love it um one of the things that i kind of love and hate are the um the screw and bars here so there's this kind of metal tube across there doesn't use a spring bar you have to use two screwdrivers to unscrew uh the two screws here you know kind of one to hold in place and the other to screw it off that'll release a screw you can push the bar out then you can replace the band you can use pretty much regular bands the bar is only a like slightly larger than a spring bar in terms of diameter so it fits most watch bands so you could definitely put an aftermarket watch band which i do like but uh you know these these screws kind of the the large bars are meant for being really uh, robust and they are uh, I've never had problems with spring bars per se. I get it, but they, they do make it kind of hard to do, you know, watch band changing at home. So, you know, from my perspective, I'd pr prefer not to have them. If you are going to change the band, I would stick with a band that you really like because otherwise it can get a little tough and kind of annoying to keep replacing them by unscrewing these. So there it is, Glycine Airman 3840. I really like these, man. Uh, I'd love to get a bunch of these in different colors and just, uh, you know, be able to um, enjoy a different style every day, but uh, a great overall watch. I have found these online for about 16 to 1800 bucks. So I think that's a really good price. Use probably a little less, but overall just a really, really phenomenal watch, phenomenal brand. Like I said, I wore uh, this watch, this the, the other model, the 3840 on a trip that ended up being a couple of weeks. Um, you know, kept power overnight, super reliable, didn't, you know, didn't, um, you know, have any negative effects to being knocked around, splashed underwater, uh, long days in the sun and the cold. And so a uh, really, really cool watch. Check it out. Put a link to it in the description. Peter Von Pand out.